Oh, hello. Welcome to the Biotopes. For those of you new here, this is a fish room of uh, a biotope gallery fish room. And what we're looking at right now is my San Carlos River Basin biotope. Now this is in on the Atlantic coast of Costa Rica. And for those of you who've been here before, can tell maybe this is a new uh, piece of wood here for this for this biotope. I added this stump here with the branches coming off, and it really has helped kind of even out the scape here. Now with these Central American cichlids, I've got uh, rainbow cichlids, here tilapia, multispinosa, and the Nic one female Nicaraguan cichlid in here. Anybody that's kept these fish knows they love to move the sand and gravel around, so that's been tough, and keeping plants in here has also been tough. But you can see this new piece of wood, even though I soaked it for over a day, I've got some air bubbles leaching out. So that uh, will be, you know, maybe a, a, another day or two, and that'll be done. But um, this is a really cool stump that I found on the beach here on uh, the lake where we live. And uh, it's really done a good job of evening out this scape. So super, super excited about that. Wanted to share that with you. First off, uh, before the end of the video, I'll give you some more photos of this. But the main part of today's video is uh, we are going out to collect for a resurrection jar. Uh, Father Fish has made resurrec resurrection jars popular, and I'm really excited and interested in checking these out and getting one set up for myself. So I'm going to head outside here and uh, start it up and see how it goes. So come along with me. All right, this is a creek just near my home, and um, just a small creek. It doesn't even have a name, um, but this is kind of the closest spot to me that I just would be easy to get to. Uh, this, I'm sure, feeds out of the Vermilion River, which is really just to the east of, of my house. Um, and this river kind of runs west to east. So in the summer and spring, you'll see little, um, you know, minnows in here, and I'm sure there were, would probably be crayfish and uh, darters and things like that. But right now it's October, so it's pretty cold, and a lot of the fish are slowing down and I'm sure in the deeper areas of this stream. So we're just going to get out here and look for a spot to grab some uh, leaves and sticks <clears throat> and some mud for my resurrection jar. So uh, I'm going to link Father Fish's video here and maybe some of his resurrection jar videos in, in this video. I'll link that to his channel. But basically what you do is you grab a jar and then you put any kind of organic material from the water in there. So in this case, I'm looking for leaves, sticks, wood. Uh, I think I do put a rock in there um, and even some kind of substrate, some mud and gook from the bottom. Although um, I don't think you need the muck and gook from the stream. Father Fish has kind of said... Um, he's kind of edited himself recently where really don't want to put a bunch of substrate in there because it just follows the water a little too fast, I think. So anyway, mostly leaves, sticks, anything decaying in the water. And you put that in a jar, uh, fill it up with water from the stream, and... Um, you can kind of keep it uncovered or put a little cloth over top, uh, put it in your house near some sunlight, and you just kind of let it sit. And over the course of the next really 30 days, you'll start to see life emerge in this jar. And so this is me kind of collecting 
I'm showing you kind of the area that, that I'm at. I'm trying to find right now a good spot to stand without getting soaking wet. And uh, grab some stuff for the jar. So This area, for those who don't know, this is in northern Ohio. So we're right on Lake Erie. And um, so you see a lot of the deciduous leaf litter there. Maple leaves, oak. Um, beech trees, that kind of thing. So here I'm digging down, trying to find some goodies. Oh yeah, there we go. And uh, this is just, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a gallon. It's a big pickle jar, probably a gallon of water. And a good sized jar, wanted to get a good, good attempt at this. And my plan with this is to use this resurrection jar to kind of start a food web in my next biotope setup. Which, if you're not subscribed, please do because, uh, you know, you can see what I've done. I've got uh, many biotopes in my fish room. I've got six 75-gallon tanks all sumped and plumbed and each of those is a different biotope from around the world so if you like biotope aquariums uh, nature botanical style aquariums that mimic uh, the natural areas these fish and plants are from then i think you'll like this channel so i'm going to use this resurrection jar to kind of kick start my next tank and start that you know, food web with all the microscopic uh, animals, copepods, daphnia, little worms, um, just this, the you know, critters that are the smallest bottom part of that kind of food, food web in nature. And this would be a great way to kind of start that off, natural way really be good for the fish. Here I'm going for one more handful of mud, which I probably didn't need, honestly. <laughs> So here's my resurrection jar. It's been, oh, probably three or four days. I put this uh, piece of cloth on the top of the jar just to keep kind of bugs from getting in. Um, but uh, you can see it's pretty brown and tannin. There's sticks in there and we're gonna put a light on it and show you what we've got so far grown in there. So you can see there's some snails. Um, you can, you'll see some real small kind of paramecium, kind of like cloud in the water. You also see some larger copepods in here, kind of scatting around. There's even some worms, so you can have a worm there. all the leaves sometimes I'll give it a little shake just to kind of wake up the critters and get them moving around a little bit but lots of paramecium you can see that cloud there in the water you know freshwater snails which is pretty cool to see even some pretty good size one you'll see the worms there I'm not sure what those are worms of, if they're kind of like a black worm or a red worm, but just showing you here some different angles. Sometimes the worms will hang around just at the top of the water level, at the surface of the water. But it's been very neat to see just in a, a few days, kind of everything comes to life there's a copepod there, scooting around. 
recently set one up for my daughter, a smaller jar. She loves nature and exploring, so she's been really excited. I actually took a piece of grass that was growing, emerged from the, the stream and, and kind of popped that in the top of her jar. I wanted to see if, see if that uh, grass with its roots submerged uh, grows at all helps so that'll be interesting but see all the sticks all the leaves and just let it sit I think if that water kind of evaporates I might add some just dechlorinated water uh, just to keep the water level up a little bit but we'll see how it goes But it's really interesting, you know, what's in that water that you just never see or know about. And I think over time, we'll start to see some larger and larger organisms kind of come alive. Here's another angle of the same jar. See some snails there, different size snails, another copepod. It's just tons of stuff, man. It's crazy. And the idea here is to add this to the beginning of an aquarium to really get it kick-started and provide kind of your um, just natural food for the fish and for the organisms in that new setup. So. Be sure you stay tuned and look out for that. That's coming soon. All right, now we're back in the fish room here. This is back to the San Carlos River Basin tank. You can see this wood uh, really goes well with the lines of the scape. Um, but there's my rainbow cichlids, that larger fish kind of the center. That's the Nicaraguan. It's a female Nicaraguan cichlid. Um, I know the tank looks kind of yellowy here. Um, it is kind of a tannin rich tank, very much like the, a lot of the rivers in this area, very muddy. Um, and it's kind of cool. I chose the rainbow cichlid and the Nicaraguan because they have very similar patterns. And this is very common for species of fish that live together in nature. They're going to look a little bit alike. Um, both as kind of defense and coping mechanism in nature.